Welcome to Side Chats with Mango Productions, Ms. Mango, aka Amalia, because this is for a class I'm taking, so Amalia here. So the last thing we talked about was contemporary versus classical, musical exploration, the classical composers versus now. I have my notebook, which is across from me, which has all of the subjects I'm going to talk about for my field reports. Um, I was supposed to do one and two for the first two, which was uh, Down with the Arts, Ultimate MK Exploration, and I was just going to use old footage that I had from like visiting the Third Ward and stuff, but honestly, I think, A, that's terrible to do, it's cheating, and while yes, I could of course talk about the experiences while I was there, I want to like go places and see what I can find. But instead, I'm going to jump to number six, the dark arts among the youth and myself. So that's what we're going to talk about today. For people that don't know what the dark arts are, it's something I specialize in and it's something that I consider myself to be extremely good at. The dark arts for me are normal art styles, drawing or normal art mediums, drawing, movie making, music, but instead of just using it to express yourself, you use it to express you and your innermost thoughts and nothing is unsafe. Whether it be your mental health struggles or stories of murder, assault, or just dark subjects, that to me is dark arts. I began my journey in the dark arts when I was in middle school. Uh, I learned about this online website called Creepypastas, and while my beginnings were definitely not glorious in the slightest, as with every artist, I grew. And something cool about this podcast is as I'm talking and editing, I'm playing my old films, uh, whether they be animation or, um, act or live action, but I experimented with the dark arts and as I grew up I learned more about myself and more about the stories I wanted to tell. Uh, before I get into the dark arts, I'm going to um, not only give some warnings, but also talk about my journey and what it means to me. And then we will talk about the dark arts in the world and how it has gotten negative connotations from people, but my main concern is children and their parents. And I'm going to tell a personal story about something that happened, not something that happened, something that I that I wrote about, basically, and I'll, I'll get into that later. So, a uh, quick warning, I will be discussing suicide, I will be discussing murder, abuse, drug use, but literally nothing is off limits for me. So, just a heads up, those are all going to be talked about. I don't know if I'll put timestamps or anything, but just know that I'm going to be talking about some really messed up stuff, and I would skip a little bit around if you're not comfortable with that. But I'm going to get started. Middle school for me was when I was experiencing depression for the first time because everyone around me, not everybody, but everybody was on Snapchat and like the, the fad was to disrespect your teachers and to just, you know, not do what you're supposed to. And growing up as someone who was mature for my age and someone who never really saw the fun or like honor or like, what's the word? attraction, I guess, to disrespecting people for no reason. It was hard for me to fit in because I, I couldn't imagine disrespecting a professor or a teacher. Be not because they're you know, a teacher, it's because they're just human beings. Obviously, everyone, when they're in middle school, they grow up and they realize, sometimes they realize what a shitty thing that was. And when they grow up, they get out of it. But that's not always the case, which I saw when I was in high school as well. Because I didn't fit in, I was diagnosed with depression when I was in seventh grade. I had dealt with bullying a little bit in middle school. My sixth grade year was when it first happened with a person, I don't even remember their name. So if that's a little PSA for you if you've ever been bullied, it's not going to last long. But I don't even remember that person's name. Um, but this person was picking on me a lot and one of the comments that stuck with me was like just random randomly saying that I needed to get a life or something and it kind of bothered me. And then there was another person in my seventh grade year who was just a horrible attention seeker and I didn't like them at all. Because I didn't have very many friends, 
at least I wasn't making new ones. I have a childhood friend that I've been friends, we're still friends to this day, a really good friend of mine. She and I are still friends, we hang out still. But when I was in middle school, she went to a different school, and so I didn't have, I didn't really make new friends. I felt more connected with teachers, and that's been, my, that's been that way my whole life. Like when we went to parties, I never wanted to sit with the kids. I didn't want to go play. I wanted to talk to the adults and tell them all the stories I had in my head. Um, so because of that, I never really connected with the kids, especially because their interests were starkly different from mine. And, and that's not a bad thing. Like It's always good to meet other people who have different opinions, different likes and hobbies, because that's diversity. But it, it was like, I felt weird, and like the stuff I was into wouldn't be something normal for a kid my age, even when I was in middle school. So because I was diagnosed with depression, I was struggling a lot with my mental health and feeling like I didn't belong and feeling like I didn't matter at all. I never went through with um, self-harm or actually trying to commit suicide, but you know, the thought definitely crossed my mind like, oh, I really don't matter, I wouldn't, I shouldn't be here, I, if, if I disappeared no one would care or notice. I am very lucky that I decided not to go through with that because now I'm here at my dream school and pursuing my dream to be the greatest Latina lesbian filmmaker there can be. But because I was experiencing so much in middle school, I turned to my one medium that I felt kept me safe and that was writing books. I started writing books when I was in fifth grade and I never gave up on that and that's kind of where I, my dream of being a writer came from and then in high school I decided to switch to film. Best decision I ever made honestly. So the dark arts for me were writing stories about and, and drawing too about mental health and dealing with feeling that, feeling that you're insignificant and feeling trapped in your own mind and I do feel that, that way a lot today as well. When I was in high school I started this fake band, this made up fictional band called The Rubies, and they make really weird music, but when it comes to lyric writing, that became another outlet because a lot of their music is about abuse, substance abuse, sexual assault, um, suicide, mental health, and that just became another medium for me, and from a normal standpoint, those things are disturbing. When I was oh good lord what year was this it was 2019 where they released an album called darkest corners which was all the songs are about mental health and i still do that to this day because even though i am doing a lot better now i'm not in therapy anymore but i still have relapses of poor mental health where i'll, I'll be pissed off about something small or something big and I won't let I won't let it go and it will ruin my entire day or I'll get mad I'll stay mad and then I'll get upset and then I'll cry and I'll just lose my mind and there are definitely times where I feel that I don't matter or feel that I'm not important the good news is I'm able to get out of those either by distracting myself with my work by talking to my mom, dad, or sister, or just calming down and remembering how important it is to be here and how life has meaning. And it's up to me to remember that meaning and to find that meaning. And for me, being a dark artist, that's what pushed me to keep going because I wanted to encourage other people to create things that were dark or strange because it, that's a way we express ourselves and for a lot of people including myself it was one of the things that kept us alive and if i wasn't able to write or to get into these fictional fake worlds that rules were non-existent i wouldn't survive middle school i shared my works with my mom my sister and two or three english teachers of mine my mom helped me uh, proofread my stuff, my sister just rooted me on, which I love her for that. And then my English teachers talked about how I was really good at writing and it, it felt good to know that because I am really good at writing and I know I am. So 
my experience with the dark arts there was for me it was not only a coping mechanism but it was also an escapism because when reality hits you and like beats you down you kind of want a way out and you either need to distract yourself with your way out being art or you end up taking the permanent way out which which is a long-term solution to a short-term problem so I am still a dark artist I love to tell stories about messed up things especially murder not because see and I think that's the misconception about dark artists now I'm shifting over to the other subject because my ADHD means I like to rant I'm trying not to do that as much so the misconception with the dark arts is that we are reflecting our personal desires in our art which is not always the case not every person that makes dark art would think of harming another human being would think of would think of abusing someone else or doing horrible things to another person at least for me like i could not imagine killing somebody that's a terrible thing and it happens too much in our society already and it's just a depressing subject matter but to tamper with it for storytelling and to further a plot along is different with dark artists we dip into the macabre sometimes especially for me as well it's just a morbid curiosity of the things wrong with our world a lot of my books deal with that kind of stuff i would never dream of being in a cult i don't even i'm not i'm not a satanist either but it's also just a morbid fascination with that stuff. I think like the idea of cults and like the supernatural and superstitions drew me in. That does not mean I would ever consider joining a cult because there are because in, in history there have been terrible cults that have killed people, that have caused the members to kill themselves or people. Like it's just a completely messed up subject. It's a it's a completely messed up thing in the real world, but as far as the story goes, it's fascinating. And you can really, like, twist things to be your own version of disturbing, which I've done before. With dark arts among the youth, the primary focus of today's episode slash field report is how middle schoolers my age make dark arts and how sometimes the parents think they shouldn't be allowed to do that and that's where this story comes in I'm from Kenosha and the KUSD school district Kenosha Unified School District school district huh the KUSD hosts something called the KUSD art show or art gallery or some crap like that I forgot the name of it but students from all over KUSD can submit artwork and some of it gets shown at the show my mom and I went, oh god, this was several years ago, but we went and, I mean, things looked normal and I saw art that reflected stuff I used to do and I thought it was really cool to see that stuff and I was impressed with some of these kids' ages and, like, some of these kids were in fifth grade and were drawing, like, like, anime style work and, like, realistic styles and it was just fucking nuts what these kids were doing and able to do. A few days passed and in the you know, the newspaper, a, per, a parent, I'm assuming a parent, had written a note to the editor or something about how kids shouldn't be allowed to create dark art. And I was just appalled. I don't remember the, spe the specifics of that article, but I just remember they talked about how kids should not be allowed to make dark or disturbing artwork and I was just like are you fucking serious so my mom showed it to me and I said I want to write back so I did I explained that when it comes to kids in the dark arts a lot of these kids and a majority of these kids and of course this is not the case for everybody there are cases of people who've made dark works and gone on to commit murders or to to do awful things and people said oh the artwork was a sign we should have paid more attention yes that can happen but that's not to say everyone is that way a lot of people especially kids at that age deal with mental health struggles and sometimes have already 
pre-existing medical uh, medical or mental illnesses. For me, I have ADHD, I have anxiety, and I have depression. Those three things are what culminated me to make dark artwork. Because I was constantly feeling ashamed of being alive or being like being who I was or having the interests I did, that that not only pushed me over the edge to think I didn't matter, but it also gave me the idea to express it in artwork. And it was a sense of freedom for me. And that's what a lot of parents and people don't understand. When you're a kid that young, like when you're like in your preteens, there's always fads and trends going around. People doing shitty things to get fame online or to be popular with the people around them. And when they can't fit into that fad or be a part of the latest trend, that can affect people. I know as an introvert, sometimes we don't want to fit in, we don't want to be around all these people, but for some people that are extroverted, but also have those kinds of mental illnesses and instabilities, it can cause them to crumble and to crush because they feel that there's something wrong with them because they can't fit in with a certain crowd. Which is going back to my point of when I was in middle school. Everyone was on Snapchat and like getting into fights. All, all This was also because I was at a very shitty middle school, but where I came from, there were fights all the goddamn time. These kids were so disrespectful to these teachers and I just was appalled by it and I couldn't fit in because I just never saw the merit in that. So because of that, these kids who feel ostracized and like they can't turn to anybody, turn to art. And yes, we can make very, very disturbing things, but a lot of it is not a, it's not a reflection of our wants, it's a reflection of our pains and our struggles. It's a way for us to speak while being silent. It's what art is. People who make dark art are not always mentally disturbed or people that are like, oh, they're gonna kill somebody. That's not always the case. So with that letter to the editor, I wrote back and said, who are you to try and censor a child's art? Censorship is everywhere in the media. And while sometimes it can benefit us by genuinely stopping the wrong, a lot of the times it's towards things that are expressive and opinionated that are shut down just because they're a little edgy, if you will, which is ridiculous. So the fact that a parent, possibly a parent, was trying to silence kids, probably thousands of kids, who are dealing with mental health struggles was just absolute bullshit. So I explained that it's not okay to censor a child's art, especially if that could be their primary lifeline. And that can be a little overdramatic, but for me that's how it was. Obviously I could talk to my parents, obviously I could talk to my sister, obviously I could reach out to teachers, but my primary source of escapism was art. That was all I had at the time. And for people, and for people who don't have the luxury of parents they can easily talk to, friends they can easily talk to, or siblings they can, care, they can easily talk to, or even teachers or counselors, or even therapists. People that don't have a good communication system with people in the real world need art, need writing, need all of those mediums to keep themselves alive. And for someone to try and say that they shouldn't be allowed to keep themselves alive is so terrible. I believe every form of art has a reason to be there and should be allowed to express itself and have merit. No art should be shunned because it's what it is. All art is for interpretation, art is for everyone. Everyone has their own medium, has their own style, has their own creative uh, process and ideation, and that's the beautiful thing about art. The fact that people think that because something because they see something they don't like that's what that is if you see something you don't like don't fucking look at it if it's too disturbing for you don't look you don't need to judge the artist because you don't like something you're allowed to not like something that's perfectly okay 
That would be like me saying, I hate green beans. I would never eat them. I would never cook them. I don't want them. But I don't have the right to say they should never been ex- they should never exist. Because people do like green beans. And who am I to judge someone for eating something that I think is gross? That's not my per- that's not that's not my place to say something shouldn't exist because I don't like it. That's not fair. And if you're willing to say that to a person because of the art they make, what does that say about you? The dark arts are not corrupting kids or the youth. There are things in this world that are not for everybody. Not everyone likes country music. Not everybody likes sushi. And not everybody likes the dark arts. It's okay to not like something. It's not okay to tell someone they can't do it because you don't like it. The dark arts are unique. And the cool thing is that they don't have to be remotely disturbing to be dark. Some of them can have hidden meanings. Some could even tell of a tragedy without remotely showing you anything. Art is indeed up for interpretation. And again, if a person doesn't like something, they just don't look at it. That's, that's all there is to it. And I, I applaud the kids who, who share their dark art with the world. Because I did too for a while. I, there's a website called Wattpad, Wattpad, I've heard it's Wattpad, I can't pronounce the damn thing, where you can publish your own stories, and I used to do that in middle school, because I wanted to share my really quote-unquote creepy stories, which, no, they were bad, but it's fascinating to know that there are platforms out there for kids who make this kind of work, who are able to share it with people and can have people not only admire their work but also compliment them on it and say, wow, this looks really good, or wow, you took a lot of time on this, I love this, or better yet, to get the best thing of all, I really feel how you feel, this really touches me as a person, thank you for sharing this. That's the benefit of artwork. And a lot of people not only do it to express themselves, but they also do it to be there for other people. For me, the dark arts have been a part of my life since I was in middle school. I tell stories that impact the world. Death is one of them. I think I think that's the other thing. Sometimes people don't like the dark arts because it deals with the fear of the unknown. It deals with things that are not knowledgeable about and sometimes new and strange things are scary but because we understand because sometimes a lot of the times when we don't understand something we choose to hate against it and when we don't understand something we decide to ridicule it or to try to push it out of our society because we don't like it the the most important message here is that people and children who work and engage with the dark arts are not mentally messed up or as I like to here's my ideology and here's what I like to say if you engage in the dark arts it does not mean you are mentally fucked it does not mean you are showing people what you want to do most it can be that sometimes but by no means does it mean there's something wrong with you even if people say there is and to people that think that to people that think kids or people shouldn't be allowed to engage in the dark arts all I have to say to you is look away and just ignore it it's not your place to tell something that they should tell someone that they shouldn't do something or that something they do shouldn't exist for some people the dark arts and expressing themselves through dark means is the only thing they can do to keep themselves alive and to feel like they have a sense of purpose in the world or to vent to themselves or to get those feelings out because when they have no one to talk to or no one to express these pains or instabilities to they don't know where to go and sometimes they have nowhere to go so they can turn to the arts to engage in a medium that not only helps them feel normal or to help them get those feelings out it helps them stay alive and for me it's one of the reasons I kept going if you get those feelings out somehow that's the most important 
that was my little rant and discussion on the dark arts I've been playing my films. Uh, they engage in dark topics as well, and I won't be discussing those because my primary focus was the dark arts among the youth. Uh, stay tuned for the following subjects. Quoth the Raven, studying everything Edgar Allan Poe has done. Down with the Arts, the ultimate NKE exploration. Experimentation versus narrative films. And inside the mind, finding inspiration around me, just engaging with things around me. And talking about how my creativity works. And since this is about, since these are about discovery, for me, it's discovering new ways to open my mind when nothing goes through. But thank you for joining me. Uh, I will see you guys soon. And next up is Patti Smith's Just Kids.